Hi, Tom Richardson for Boating Local, and today I'm in Mattapoisett, Massachusetts at the Mattapoisett Boatyard to learn a few things about moorings. Now, the Mattapoisett Boatyard services some 500 moorings in and around the harbor, so it's fair to say that they're experts on the subject. Today, General Manager Dave Kaiser and his crew are going to show us all the steps involved in maintaining and inspecting moorings to make sure they're in perfect working order. So, so Dave, how long uh, into the uh, winter will you in, uh, work on moorings, typically? Generally, we're finished in December. Mm -hmm. We try to have everything completely buttoned up by the middle of December, because it gets cold out here. <laughs> and when do, you, when do you start up again? We'll start up in March. Yeah. Usually about the middle of March, we'll start putting most of our moorings out, and, uh, and we'll be, we won't wrap it up until the middle of July. This is our mooring boat. We bought it about 30 years ago. Um, at the time, it was probably 20 years old. Uh, we put a new bottom on it twice, rebuilt the old Detroit, it's got an old Detroit Gray Marine 671, which dates back to 1952, if I'm not mistaken. We uh, outfitted her with this crane. As I said, the, the winch on this crane and the hydraulics is capable of picking about 5,000 pounds. Uh, once yeah, you get to we had to pull up a 1,000 pound pyramid that was all wrapped up, and most of the harbor is just muck, and it's nasty. <laughs> so it's usually a lot of fun. How many uh, how many moorings can these how many winter sticks can these guys put on in an hour? On average, when they're working hard and nice flat conditions, they can do between 20, uh, 10 and 12 per hour. A uh, good day, a uh, record I think was 62 in one day. So that was a good day. All that up that it was yep. it was definitely worn out. So the, that top section of half inch chain is being replaced now with the chain. Yeah, yeah, show me the worn like the worn section that you didn't like. Oh yeah. This is where it wears out. Each link just does this all day long, all night. And so, but this is what it's supposed to look like. So this is about 50% of the, of the, its original size. And so you'd re that's when you would so replace what, it. So this would get replaced because mm -hmm. one more season of this wear and tear, you don't know, it's gonna, it could, you know, you look at the link here, it's really starting to wear thin in there. Typical mooring is we would use half inch chain up to the surface. This is galvanized. Uh, we've been using galvanized and, uh, and self-colored chain. Uh, domestic chain is all 100% US steel virgin material. De uh, foreign chain, it, who knows what the blend is and the, uh, with those different alloys, they wear out much, much faster. Mm -hmm. We were lucky to get two years on half inch chain with the foreign chain, yes. where we typically get four years out of So it may be cheaper, but you know, you're taking a risk. That's right, it's just, it's not worth it. And hey, support America. <laughs> These are the winter sticks we've been using. These are Taylor, uh, built by Taylor. Down on the bottom is a, a molded eye into here, and we put nylon, uh, just choke it right into it. Obviously, we check this nut this every year. Um, we take this rope, it's on here. We take, this is about uh, 10 or 15 feet of, uh, of nylon, and then this attaches right to the chain, so that then you put most of the chain on the bottom. So, so the winter stick isn't just to uh, prevent uh, ice damage to the That's ball, right. it's actually to get the chain it into the mud? It puts the chain on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, puts it back on the bottom away from that wear point. And, uh, and so, it, so you can get at least two or three more years out of it. If that chain were suspended all winter long, that same wear point where the tidal zone is and where the boat is pulling on all the time is constantly being, uh, being worn on the bottom. So, and, and it wears thin. Mm -hmm. So if you left that section right there, you might only get two years out of a section. Right, because it's still wearing on that same point, right, right. Uh, you know, for that next six month period. That's right. Now, also the winter stick, uh, it's a, you'll see on the water, they're tapered plastic sticks. Uh, we also use some wooden sticks. Uh, some people use PVC, um, logs were the old, you know, back in the 40s and 50s. But anyway, they, um, and, but with, they're tapered so that when the ice forms around them, the ice, uh, as the fl ice flow moves, the winter stick just drops under the ice and so it won't carry the morning away. Now we bring the old grungy dirty line. This is the top of the line has a lot less growth. Down here what's been laying in the water is just grimy messy you know slimy. And here's the buoy that comes up off the bottom you know out of the, the float off here. Even despite painting it it still gets all this growth on here. 
which then, so once we bring all these moorings in, everything needs to be washed and inspected. Oh, that's good Mattapoisa mud. <laughs> So okay. come here, I want to show you where we keep all the mooring buoys. In this building, we store mooring buoys in and amongst all of the boats that we store indoors. Um, in the end, we will have obviously about 500 or so mooring balls in storage that during the winter, we'll pick each one of these up, we'll clean the bottom, uh, prep it out, make sure it's all you know ready to go and put new bottom paint on, and then come over here We'll re-letter the, uh, the owner's name on here and the mooring number, which is all part of this uh, identification of each mooring system. And, um, and then we'll stack them again where they're ready to go. We'll divide them up by each region, by each area in the harbor where they go. So that in the spring, we just pull each batch of buoys out and head out again. Come into our mooring shop. So as you can see, the mountain of nylon, believe it or not, there's organization here. It's much more organized than it looks. It looks like a big heap, but it's really not. But they have to be gone through, sorted out, checked out. We go through every one of these thimbles. These swivels sometimes wear out, where the shackles, see the wear right here on this swivel? Um, this is still good, but if it wears through much more than that, we'll replace the swivel. Um, we look for chafing on the, on the chafe gear, on these bridles. Um, we look for any of these floats that are getting old and cracked. Um, this one probably has a few more years in it. And then of course, then we go and letter it. Put new lettering paint on it and, um, and make sure the floats again, you know, the, the mooring number is on every one of the floats. Well, thanks a lot, Dave, for walking us through the, uh, the ins and outs of mooring maintenance and inspection. There's a lot more to it than a lot of people think, right? Oh, well, it sure is. It's all about the right maintenance, the right equipment. I mean, after all, there's a lot to protect. That's a big investment that's out there right. on the water. Exactly. And all it takes is one weak link, right? <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> well, that's good advice from Dave Kaiser in the Mattapoisett Boatyard. I'm Tom Richardson for Boating Local. Thanks for watching.